Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics and we'll be looking at equilibrium and this will be our 18th part in this series and what we have going on here is this picture on the left and it states that a 250 pound box labeled as W is suspended from four wires as shown above. So we have wire A, B, C, and D. And it says determine all the forces in all the wires, A, B, C, and D, in order to keep equilibrium. And we're also told that alpha here is 50 degrees and this beta over here is 60 degrees. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to draw two separate free body diagrams. And we're going to have to do one for this point as our um, point of interest. And then we're going to have to do another one up here because our cables are splitting off as they move up. Well, cable C, when it goes to connect into the wall up here and the surfaces, it breaks off into another cable A and B. So anytime that happens, we need another free body diagram for that point of interest. So let's focus on our first free body diagram, which would be this portion right through here. So you always kind of want to start where your forces are being applied if ever you have a problem like this and then work your way away from the force being applied. So the first free body diagram will look like this, where we have our point of interest right here. And I'm going to make that my origin point for my coordinate system of my X and Y here. So there's my X axis, there's my Y axis. So I'm going to have my weight of my box which is going downward for 250 pounds. And then I'm going to have my cable here for D and my cable here for C. Now, since they are in tension, since cables can only be in tension, we know that they are pulling away from our point of interest. So I'm gonna call this one force C and this one force D. I'm also told the angles in which these cables or these forces now are off of the horizontal. So for the C cable, I am 50 degrees off the X axis. And for the D cable, I am 60 degrees off the X axis. And that is my first free body diagram for the bottom portion here. Now, for equilibrium to hold true, since we are in a 2D system here, I'm going to have to have my summation of forces in my X direction be equal to zero and the summation of the forces in my vertical direction, which is my Y, also be equal to zero. So we can utilize this equilibrium in order to find out what FC and FD need to be to keep this system stable. So let's start by summing forces and you can either start in the X or Y, it does not matter. So I'm gonna start in the Y direction. I'm going to take all my forces in the upper direction as positive, everything in the downward direction as a negative force. So I would have my FC and my FD. Both of them are going in the upwards direction, but you have to watch out here. FC and FD are both at angles. So they are going to have components in both the X and Y directions. FC is going up and to the left, so its components will be going upward and to the left. FD is pointed up and to the right, so its components will be up and to the right. So with FC here, its component is pointed upward, so it will be a positive, so it will be FC. And then I have to multiply it using this angle to get this resultant force into its component form in the Y direction, and that would be utilizing the sine of the 50 degree angle. So you can look at it like this, where we have this triangle here, here's my vertical, here's my horizontal force, and that's my angle right there of 50 degrees. So this would be my Y, this would be my X, and this is my major FC force. So in order to determine what this component is, I need to multiply by the sine of the 50 degrees because the angle is opposite the Y direction. And then do the same thing for the D force over there. So it'd be plus FD since it's pointed upward and it will be sine of 60 degrees because the sine is coming off of the X, not the Y. So the Y is opposite and we use sine for that. And then lastly, subtracting off my 250 pounds here. And that's all I have in my Y equal to zero. Now, looking at this equation, we have two unknowns in here. Can't really solve it. So whenever this happens, it's not busting the problem. It just means go on to your other equilibrium equation, which would be our X one. So in the X, and we'll take everything to the right as positive. And all those summation of forces have to be equal to zero for equilibrium. 
So my FC is, uh, its component in the X direction is pointed negative. So this would be minus FC, and this time it'll be cosine of 50 degrees because the angle's off of the X and that's adjacent. And then plus FD, since it's pointed to the right, and this would also be cosine of 60 degrees because that angle is off of the X, cosine is adjacent. And then that's all we have in our X direction equal to zero because the 250 is 100% in the Y. It has no component in the X direction. So once again, we cannot solve the FX just by itself, but look what we have here. We have two equations and two unknowns, so we can solve this. So working with the FX equation, I'm just going to rearrange this so that we have FD cosine of 60 is equal to FC cosine of 50. So then FD would just be equal to FC multiplied by the cosine of 50 divided by the cosine of 60. That's supposed to be an S, by the way. And this comes out to be 1.286 FC. So what I can do is I can take this and then plug it into my Y equation for FD. So let's do that. So my Y equation now becomes this, where I have um, the sine of 50 is 0 0.766 times FC plus my FD, which now is 1.286 FC times the sine of 60. And I'm going to take the 250 to the opposite side, so equal to a positive 250. So I'm going to pull FC out of both of these portions here. So it'll be FC multiplied by 0 0.766, and then plus 1.286 times the sine of 60 becomes 1.114 is equal to 250. So that means that FC is equal to 250 divided by 1, 0 0.766 plus 1.114 is 1.88. And this gives me an FC value of 132.98 pounds in that upward left direction. So there's one of my cable forces. Well, I can find my other cable force, FD, just by taking this answer and plugging it into my equation that I had for FD right here because FD is just simply 1.286 times FC, which is 132.98 pounds. And that gives me an FD value of 171.01 pounds up and to the right. And just keep in mind, as we're going through here, your answers are gonna be different based upon how you rounded here. So we found FC and we found FD. So we have two of our four answers. So we have this one and we have this one. Now we have to determine what A and B are. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just to take a second free body diagram since cable C splits here at A and B with this center point being our point of interest. So let's go ahead and let's do a free body diagram for this portion right here. So I'm going to draw in my, oh, let's redo that one because that was not very straight. Let's draw in my X and Y here. And I'm going to have my point of interest between all the cables. C is flying off down and to the right in this direction. B will be strictly vertical and A will be strictly horizontal. So since the cables have to be in tension, I know they are all pulling away from my point of interest. So I'm gonna call this one FB, and we'll call this one FA, and of course this one is FC. And we just found FC, which is 132.98 pounds. Well, what's up with the arrow here? Well, the arrow for the previous free body diagram shows it up and to the right, and I'm showing it down, or up and to the left, sorry, and on this one, I'm showing it down and to the right. So why is that? Well, if we were to draw our cable C here, from each point that C is connected to, our first one, we are pulling at 132.8 pounds away from that point. And at this point up here, which is our second point of interest, where A and B connect in, we are also pulling away at 132.98 pounds. Since the cable needs to be in tension, that means it needs to be pulling away from each end. <clears throat> so this will signify tension inside of a cable. So it's pulling away from the endpoint at each end. 
So don't strictly just look at the arrow directions and assume that's the way it's going to be applied all the way throughout the cable. It depends on which end you are looking at. Tension will always signify a pulling away from the end manner. So if you were to flip this arrow and put it like that, that means that it would be compressing this endpoint and pushing this up in this direction. No, the weight, which is all the way down here, is pulling on this cable relative to this point where A and B connect in. So you always have to watch out for those flipping of arrows that occur there. So the other thing that we know is that from the beginning picture here, let me scroll back up, is that we know that C is 50 degrees off the horizontal. So what that means is that this angle right here is also alpha. So anytime you have an angle that is off the horizontal, that means anytime that line passes through a horizontal, it will always be that same angle. So FC is 50 degrees off the horizontal up here. And that would be my completed second free body diagram. And just like before, what we're going to do is that we're going to sum forces in the X and Y to get FA and FB. This one will be much easier because, well, FA and FB are only in the X and Y, respectively. So let's sum forces in the Y direction equal to zero. We'll take up as positive. And FA does not occur in this because it's solely in the horizontal direction. So we would have FB, which is pointed upward, so it's positive, and then minus my FC, which is 132.98 pounds. And this will be sine of 50 degrees once again, because the angle's off of the X. So the Y is opposite and that is sine. And that's all we have equal to zero. So FB is just essentially 132.98 times the sine of 50, which is 101.87 pounds in that upward direction. Alrighty, and then let's do our last one here. So we'll sum forces in the X. We'll take to the right as positive. Everything to the left is negative. So FA is pointed to the left because it needs to be in tension. So it needs to be pulling away from our points of interest. So we have minus FA and then plus FC, which is 132.98. And this time it is cosine of 50 to get it into the X direction equal to zero. And I did not mention this, but it's the same relative idea as the previous Rubai diagram. Since FC is down into the right, that means its components are going down into the right. So FA is just essentially the opposite of 132.98 cosines of 50, which equals 85.48 pounds acting to the left. And that's how you would solve for those for cable forces. Just keeping in mind, anytime you have a cable splitting or additional cables coming into a point, it is always best just to break that point into its own separate free body diagram and looking at all the forces and cables that are applied at that point. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problem solvers variety, please check out the other videos on our channel as this is part 18 of the static equilibrium portion. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all that does really help us over here. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.